With my brother and sister-in-law expecting two twin boys, I decided to put the wood shop to good use and create a rocking bassinet. For the design, I went for something simple and clean, kind of a mid-century modern slash Danish style. Jumping right in, I cut eight pieces of two by four inch pine that would later be joined with dowels. These pieces together would create the base of the bassinet basket. A few quick runs over the jointer and through the planer and these pieces would be squared and ready for joining. Once all the boards were prepped and squared, I put them in order and determined which two planks would be my centerpieces. I cut these two centerpieces down so that the uprights that would hold the basket of the bassinet to the exterior frame would sit flush with the rest of the base. Once all the pieces were cut to length, I went about marking the holes for the dowel pins. There's certainly more precise ways to do it than I did, but with the pack out to Africa looming, I wanted to move through these more tedious tasks quickly. So I flipped all the boards on their sides, clamped them all together, and then used a square to demark where the dowel pins would go all at once. This did give me kind of a tighter fit later on, um, but for the most part, it actually worked out pretty good. I used the same method for both sides. Using just a generic jig, I placed a pinhole at each mark. With all the pinholes placed, I did a quick dry fit for safety, then placed the dowels with glue and started to connect the planks. As I worked through this joining process, I made quite a few revisions. I cut down the number of dowels that I was going to place and decided to only glue and clamp a few planks at a time, rather than trying to do the full set all together in one foul swoop. And I think the necessity to take it in step is probably a product of my less than perfect pin placement for these dowel joints. Now better pin placement aside, the one part of this joining process that I would go back and revise would be the placement and usage of clamps and also the purchasing of higher quality clamps. I think I put myself through a great deal of frustration by being impatient on where I put the clamps and also going the cheap route out and getting clamps that simply weren't going to do the job. said with plenty of wax from the mallet and pressure from newly purchased clamps we were able to get all of the planks secured into one base piece for the bassinet basket. While I knock out the first sand down of the freshly cured base I wanted to point out a slight cup that developed during glue up. I think as a result of poor clamping and impatience. 
It turned out to be a happy accident as the cup was symmetrical, concaving toward the center of the basket, offering even more cradle for the boys. But if you're willing to share, I'd love to hear a few tricks of the trade in the comments below on how I can improve this joining process. Next, it was time to measure and mark the placement of the larger dowels that would make up the railing. I placed them about a half inch inset from the exterior edge and each one was I think about 1.96 inches apart. Because my drill press is itty bitty and its table is no match for this piece, I went about placing the holes with just a rounded cutter bit and my portable drill. Once all the pinholes were set, we had to get rid of all of the evidence that I can't just perfectly eyeball place railings, so the base of the basket went through another bout of sanding. With the base ready to go, I cut the dowels for the railing. They were half inch dowels that ended up being about 12 inches in length. After the dowels are ready, I cut and join the top frame of the railing. Using one by three inch pre-cut white pine, I first cut the mitered corners for each side. Then using the table saw, I ripped about an inch and a half of the width of the railing away just to meet the needs of the bassinet design. all cut, I measured and marked the placement for the pinholes where the railing dowels would meet the upper part of the railing frame. Again, the offset from the perimeter was about a half inch and the separation between the dowels was about 1.96 inches. Because these pieces were significantly smaller, I could use the drill press to create more precise and cleaner cut pinholes. So I did! With every hole drilled, except for the ones that would end up in the corners, I used tape tension to glue up the mitered edges and let the top piece of the frame set to cure. While I waited for those to dry, I went about whitewashing the base of the bassinet and staining the dowels. The whitewash was two parts paint, one part water. Once the glue dried, I could turn back to the upper frame pieces for the railing and give them their first round of sanding. 
Not only would this help with the final finishes, but it also cleared out some of the excess glue drip in the corners so that I could place those final corner pin holes more cleanly. Like the base of the bassinet, these two railing pieces went through another round or two of sanding and then were whitewashed with a two to one ratio of white paint to water. With the other pieces of the bassinet basket coming together, it was time to work on the uprights. These would be the structural pieces that would actually connect the basket of the bassinet to the exterior frame. I went through the same process of cutting, jointing, planing, and then joining these planks together as I did with the base of the basket. up with two 22 inch planks that were both flanked by two and a half inch pieces on either side that would sit below the bed of the bassinet basket. I added angular cuts to the outside of each flank. I did this mostly for design aesthetics, but it actually gave some valuable clearance for the basket to swing when I needed to add a little extra bracing on the exterior frame. To attach the uprights to the base of the basket, I drilled holes through the innermost railing dowel hole on through the center of the upright flank that sits below the basket. Then I placed and tightened a threaded bolt through the shaft to secure the two together. Saving myself a trip to Home Depot for shorter bolts, I simply used an angle grinder to remove excess length. Then it was time for the first dry fit. After dry fitting the railing, I marked the spot for another dowel joint that would join the uprights to the upper railing frame and added the pinholes and dowels. With everything marked off and all the railing pieces ready, it was time for glue ups. a long time about when to do paint and stain finishes. A little bit about me, I hate finishing. And I knew that I would have an easier time cleaning up glue sloppiness than I would with painting and staining between the lines for that much surface area. 
So I went with pre-finishing before the glue rather than trying to do two different finishes on one completed piece. With the basket curing, I turned to building the exterior frame. Using 2 by 4 inch white pine, I cut the panel pieces to length at a 90 degree angle at first, then squared them with the joint turn planer. Once prepped, I cut the angled edges at about 31.6 degrees to make the trapezoidal shape. Using a scrap piece of an earlier draft of the uprights, i.e. a screw up, I measured, marked, and cut the angular feet for the frame. Once the pieces were all cut, I added grooves to the interior edges so that a quarter inch piece of plywood would be able to sit securely within the trapezoidal frame. To begin gluing the frame together, I started at the feet. I measured and marked the locations for the dowel pin holes, then used the same generic jig to drill them into place. the dowels and glue, and voila, had a readied base. I also used dowel joints to add rigidity and join the rest of the frame pieces as well. With the frame pieces ready, I outlined the shape of the interior panel and cut it from quarter inch plywood. Then, another round of glue ups. Once the glue had cured, I needed to start getting these frames caught up to the basket. Cue, sanding, and painting montage. To get the frame to connect to the basket without restricting its ability to rock, took a few rounds of design and redesign. I ended up utilizing ball bearings and a system of bolts, nuts, and washers to get the basket in place.
The first rendition of the design only included two bearings, one on either end of the exterior frame and non-reinforced holes in the uprights of the basket. But after testing it out and thinking about the eventual wear and tear a narrow bolt might have on soft pine, I opted to add an additional set of bearings at the connection point on the basket as well. With these major structural elements in place, it was time for another round of finishing work before adding the lower cross beams that would sure up the exterior frame. The crossbeams too went through a few rounds of design and redesign. I started with boards that were more narrow and at a pretty low placement. But I landed on three planed and jointed 2x4s, one secured in the center of the bottom of each panel and two secured at an angle as far up each side as I could get them without impeding the swing of the basket. After basket and frame became one, I had one last finishing piece to make before adding the final coat of sealant. To protect the boys and their parents, and as a little design feature, I added two cute little rounds to cover the points at which the bolts exited the uprights. With the whole puzzle put together, cue the final finishes montage. Thanks so much for watching you guys. This was easily one of the most difficult projects that I've designed and built thus far. I uh, tried a bunch of new techniques, a bunch of different design features, including the actual rocking of the actual basket. Um, so I definitely pushed myself, but had so much fun doing it. Um, if you guys are gonna build your own bassinet, please go and read all of the federal regulations, safety protocols, mommy message boards. Uh, don't rely on build videos, be it mine or others that you see on YouTube. Go do your own research. Um, there's a lot of legalese, but the peace of mind is well worth it. And uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'd love your feedback, so please leave comments, questions, concerns, all in the comment section below or uh, feel free to shoot me an email at honestworkdesigns at gmail.com. 
If you enjoyed this video, there's a ton more where that came from that I'm working on and I just also have a head full of ideas. Um, so please feel free to subscribe. As I've said in a couple of my other videos, many of my future projects will be coming to you from the heart of Africa. Uh, so please feel free to join me in not only a couple of cool build videos from local exotic woods, but the struggle of finding materials and figuring out how to ask for them in a language I don't know and just the general journey of being pushed pretty far outside my comfort zone to, to build some cool pieces. Um, it's definitely gonna be an adventure, so stick around.